Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of sketchbooks that I've been playing with for a couple of months. They are the new Hannah Mule, or Hannah Mule, I'm probably still saying it wrong, toned sketchbooks. They come in gray or tan paper. They are 95 pounds or 200 GSM and they have 60 pages per book or 30 sheets. I do find the pages to be robust enough to paint on both sides, even though they're only 90 pounds, and um, they have the same quality or very similar quality to the regular white Hanamule sketchbook and zigzag books and other products that they sell. So these are not the cotton papers. These are the cellulose papers. So if you've used like their, um, their watercolor postcards or their cellulose watercolor sketchbooks, it's a very similar similar feeling book. And uh, these are some new ones, and I'm going to show you the ones that I've actually been sketching in. But I wanted you to see what they look like in case you're looking for them in a store. I don't know how many stores currently have them. I know that Wet Paint in Minnesota sells them. I don't think they're on their website. They weren't the last time I checked. So you could call them up and, um, and order some if you wanted to. I'm not sure what the price is on them, but um, I find hand meal products in general to be... Uh, pretty reasonable. So they have a linen cover and a bookmark there so you can keep your place if you're painting a lot. There's also a nice rubber band here to keep the book shut when you're traveling. I throw my sketchbooks in a, um, it's like a backpack with a stool attached and uh, you know that's nice because it keeps the papers from getting bent. And um, we'll take a look at them here. So um, I was surprised they sent me both of these. Um, I had just, uh, when they asked me if I wanted to review these, these were sent to me for free for review. Don't mind my freaky nails. I painted them last night and uh, I did the base coat and the several layers of color and the top coat and they completely peeled off this morning. <laughs> and I just couldn't be bothered to redo them. Um, so you can get either a beige tone or a gray tone book. Um, I found it pleasant to work on the beige tone. I felt the gray should be grayer because this doesn't look that much different than like white. Let me grab something that's, well, I'll show you the back of this. So this is just like a natural white watercolor paper. I find that the gray tone is not that much darker. It kind of looks like the uh, recycled paper, you know, or like almost like a cardboard box. Um, no, it's not even as dark as like a cardboard box. It reminds me of like recycle, like if you get a recycled sketch pad or a recycled um, notepad, it's not as gray as like a tone gray paper or a tone gray mixed media. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Although, and I'm like, well, I'm going to keep using it because I, there's got to be something that I'm going to really love about this gray paper. When I did um, in colored pencil, I really liked it when I, because I was going to use some nice bright white. So if you're going to use a bright white and have the edge next to the gray, I think that really works. It really makes it pop. And I did um, this garlic and I used the Daniel Smith Primatech paints. And then I used some white gouache on the edges. And I did like that a lot with this cool color scheme because it's a watercolor paper. I get the gorgeous granulation and it shows off the characteristics of the watercolor paint. But then I can put that pop of white gouache and it almost brings it up another level. So I did find a, find a way I like to use that gray. Um, and then, you know, I'm fooling around with some gouache. Uh, I found that, that uh, it worked really well for gouache. Here I swatched some gouache out there and um, just kind of doodled around with some gouache there. And it was really nice with the gouache because if you're going to use some white anyway, because uh, gouache obviously is opaque and it covers up everything. So uh, it really makes the most of the tone paper. It kind of makes it look a little bit more finished or it gives you like a little bit extra place you can go with the highlights. Um, that said, gray is not a favorite color. I'm wearing this dingy old gray sweatshirt. You've probably seen it in like so many videos. I think it's so funny because every once in a while I'll have like some um, jewelry or clothing company say like contact me and say, I love your style. <laughs> Would you like to uh, uh, pick out some clothes for your videos and be sponsored? And it's like, you love my style, really? What, what, did you like my gray dingy sweatshirt or my blue dingy sweatshirt? Please be specific. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a blanket forum letter they send to every YouTuber. Um, so the, the tan one, I really liked the tan paper. Um, I tend to gravitate more to warm colors anyway. Like I know gray walls are so popular and they do look really chic in people's homes and stuff, but I, do, I wouldn't enjoy that. I have cement walls in my studio downstairs because it's in the basement and I hate that. Um, I'm not a gray, uh, not a gray fan, but I love tans and beiges. So I really liked this paper. Again, look how cool cool, like cool is in temperature that white looks on that beige. It's kind of fun. And even I just, I like the watercolor on the beige quite a bit, even though this is darker than the gray. Um, and the watercolors are transparent. I think it gives it like a vintage feeling to be able to see through the watercolor paint and have that beige paper behind it. Um, 
And so, and I think that's a lot of personal preference. Although I still think that that gray should be a little bit darker on the gray uh, sketchbook. Love it for color pencil on this too. Um, you saw I did the raspberry and color pencil in the other, the, uh, the gray sketchbook. It really handles color pencil well. And the other thing that would be really nice is that if you're going to do a color pencil piece and you want to do like a vignette around, I could have done that vignette in a watercolor pencil and so much more easily had, have faded that out and spread it out and then done, then finished up with a traditional wax pencil. Um, so I like that it's a robust pen paper that gives you so many options. Uh, this is just a little plant I saw in the woods the other day. I took a photo of it and I it just, I like, I wanted to use this paper because I wanted to use white gouache and I wanted to see, I wanted to have that, like not just stark white paper underneath. And when you have a toned paper, it takes a lot of the time away. Like you can get to the good stuff because you've got a background kind of already laid in. And I think that's all I have in there. So for, for playing around with this book for a while, I really haven't done a heck of a lot with it, but, um, but I do like it. Definitely the beige, I would say is a winner. I'm not as fond of the gray, but it definitely, I was happy with some of the stuff I did on it. If you want to change a pace and you want something different to maybe expand your watercolor or get yourself out of a watercolor rut, give them a try. Um, and like I said, I don't think they're very expensive because they are cellulose paper, but you know, they're fun. They're fun. You could go on both sides. I just am careful about going on the opposite side of a sketchbook page if I have colored pencil on it because if I worked on this side, if I put any pressure like drawing, I could scribe lines onto the next page. So that's usually why I end up working on one side of a sketchbook. But hey, they're fun. There's something different. Sometimes we just get in a rut and it's nice to have something different to uh, to try. So I would definitely say give it a give it a whirl. Now there were toned watercolor papers available, I think starting in the 90s. I'm not sure if they're still around, but Bockingford had a range of like nine different shades of toned watercolor paper, but they never really took off. I'm not sure if you can still get them or not, but um, but I highly recommend picking up this beige one. I think it's a heck of a lot of fun and uh, the quality is good. It's not, you know, it's not the thickest paper. T customarily, we work on 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. So this is, you know, 95 pound, I think it said on the uh, the new one. 95 pounds. So, you know, it's considerable, considerably lighter, but since it's a small sketchbook, I really don't think it's that big of an issue. It does come in other sizes. There is a, um, one that's about five and a half by five and a half. So it'd be about like that. This is an A5, which is about eight and a half by five and a half. And then there's an A6, which I had to look up because I don't know my, <laughs> my imperial measurements. It's about, um, uh, four by, oh, I got it on my computer. Let me just go to the other tab there. I can never remember it either. It's four, about 4.1 by 5.8 inches. So it's about, um, yeah, it's about half of the size, like that, that way. Um, so it's, it's also nice to kind of work in a different size once in a while. I like the landscape format because I throw this in my sketchbook, my travel sketch bag and be able to do a panoramic landscape if I want to. So that's kind of fun too. Yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm partial to Hannah Muley products. I really like their 100% cotton watercolor papers. I've never been disappointed in any of their products. Um, I find that they either make really exquisite high-end products or they make really fun novelty products like the postcards. I love their postcards. Um, they all perform well. They always, they all perform as they should. You can expect them to do what you expect them to do, which not is not always the case in in watercolor supplies or art supplies you know these do the job they're supposed to do you know it's amazing how many products don't do the job they're supposed to do it's uh it's amazing but uh you will not have that problem with the hand mule stuff and i th i think these sketchbooks are fun so uh i will put the link to their website in the video description like i said this is not sponsored but these were sent to me for free to review uh, you should be able to look up stores near you that would have these or online sellers that uh, carry Hanamule products. These are a pretty new items, so not all stores are going to have it, but something for you to keep your eyes open for, maybe put on your Christmas list if, you know, your, uh, your friends or family are looking for something fun to get you in the artsy realm. Hey, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you enjoy reviews or any other tutorials. <laughs> I heard another YouTuber say, uh, Say, so give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you didn't like this video, hit the thumbs down button twice. <laughs> and I'm like, that is awesome. I love that. It's so funny. Uh, but yeah, if you don't like this video, by all means, hit that thumbs down button twice. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting silly. All right, I got to go finish cooking dinner. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.